Guten Morgen und herzlich willkommen zur Jahrespressekonferenz. Good morning and warm welcome to the annual press conference 2021 of Volkswagen Commercial Vehicles here coming from our customer center in Hanover. We are very pleased to not only give you information about important milestones in 2020, but also cast a glance into the future. Most of all, this information will be presented by Carsten Intra, CEO of Volkswagen Commercial Vehicles, and Holger Kincher, our CFO. Now, ladies and gentlemen, now you see you're watching a recording that we did yesterday evening in a very small group of people. We decided to do it this way in order to have as few people as possible in one room to reduce the corona risk as much as possible. All the journ registered journalists from 10 o'clock have the possibility to be in a conference call and ask all of our board of management of our brand. You've got the registration data already. Already, If not, you find the information directly next to this window. Right to, to the right of this window, you find the download area with some of the material, just like the press report, which we have made available to you. All of the documents are also available at our press portal under vwn-presse.de for download. The team of Commercial Vehicle Communication and I myself are available for further questions. All of those who watch us on YouTube, I would also like to be welcome. In these times, this somewhat unusual mix of recording and live conference call is hopefully understandable for everyone. It is of the utmost importance to protect all of our teams. But without further ado, I would now like to hand over to Volkswagen Commercial Vehicle CEO, Carsten Intra. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It's a great pleasure to welcome you and talk about our business performance at Volkswagen Commercial Vehicles. Now, the COVID-19 situation for all of us continues to be difficult, but still every day I see a team here that is standing together, but standing together obviously means keeping that distance at this time. Now, there's no question at all that 2020 has been a challenging year for us. A year that truly has taken a toll on us, especially in our operating business, but it's precisely in these times that we realize how important these products are for our customers, our society, and we really see that the relevance of light commercial vehicles is only gaining in importance. 2020 also was a year of major and strategic decisions for us. Uh, a uh, year really that we can be proud of. Just in our video clip, you've seen what Volkswagen Commercial Vehicles is about, what we have been about and will be going forward, in the sense that we're not only selling cars, our products stand for a lifestyle, a special attitude, because also our customers are special, often they are fans. The fascination for our vehicles that I see day in, day out, also with people around me, is truly unique. We move people, but without products and services, we're moving an entire society. This is in the line is of uh, Mark Brand claim that suggests that we are transporting success, freedom, and future. And it's this success of our customers, especially the commercial customers, makes it is success for all of us. It makes us essential, really. Why? Because our vehicles are delivering goods to where they need to go. They are on the roads as mobile workshops. Uh, they carry emergency responders and police officers. So being someone who works in utility vehicles, being useful to society, in other words, is very important for us. And our products also convey a feeling of uh, joy and freedom. Our vehicles, like from the California family, ensure this independence. It's in many ways a way of life that has been pervasive since the 1968 years and after. So this is embodied like in no other brands. This is our DNA. This is also our future. And we're also now uh, capturing new future solutions with our camper van, for instance. We've redefined mobility, an entirely new defined a segment. Autonomous driving, digital mobility and transport as a service solutions are also involved here. We will be leaders in that as well. And this is precisely what we want to talk to you about here today. We want to show you where we are headed and what that means for the future of our brand and also for our customers. Now, in a moment, Holger Kincher will talk to you about 
uh, business and financial performance of the past year, but let me uh, give you some of the most important figures of 2020 here. When it comes to deliveries to customers, we're coming in at around 370,000 vehicles. Now, due to the COVID-19 pandemic, this is clearly below the previous years. In terms of sales, we have seen a similar trends. We could not repeat the good previous year result after 12 months, so we came in at 9.4 billion euros, which is about 18 percent below the net sales of 2019. In terms of operating profit, we posted a negative 454 million euros. Now, for one thing, we invest in the renewal of our entire product line. The Caddy 5 was only the beginning, and our customers can truly expect a dazzling array of new products. And also, we had a one-time special effect. Now, for the first time, we had to uh, account for a CO2 levy. Now, what that is, it's an internal, group internal compensation mechanism for our product portfolio with which we are not yet meeting the EU emissions target. So that is a f an effect that will stay in place also in 2021. But then in 2022, the all-electric ID bus will massively improve our situation. And then for 2021 already, we expect an improved result. So more details on our business and financial performance on 2020 will be uh, uh, given out by our CFO, Holger Kincher. Uh, I'll be back in a second. Holger, over to you. Thank you, Carsten. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. We've seen it on the last chart, the numbers for 2020. When it comes to deliveries to customers were below those of the year 2019. And of course, of course that is clearly related to the pandemic. We delivered 371,700 vehicles to customers, thus 24% less than in 2019. In our biggest region in Western Europe, we were able to deliver 264,900 vehicles to customers, a decline of 22% year on year. In North America, we delivered 7,000 vehicles, 38% minus year on year. Again, reason is Corona, mainly uh, the market of Mexico was concerned. In South America, we have delivered 28,200 vehicles to customers, just under 26% less than in 2019. Brazil was uh, mainly affected here, where the Amarok has a very strong position. It is, there is one region which has growth year on year, which is the Middle East. In this case, it was specifically the Turkish market. With 14,700 vehicles, it went up by 20.9 per cent year on year. When we take a look at the 371,700 deliveries to customers and look at the model range, we can see that with the Caddy, we are at 112,700 vehicles. That's a decline of 27.3 per cent year on year which was mainly due to two effects. We changed from the Caddy 4 to the Caddy 5 model, and thus, uh, as such, we are losing a certain amount of volume. But with the market launch, we went directly into lockdown and then had to deliver vehicles to customers. That was truly difficult. The Caddy 5 is very well received by our customers, and I'm sure that we would have been able to curb the decline year on year. But as it stands, we have the 27 uh, percent of loss. With the T model, our strongest volume model year on year, we have a decline of 24.7 percent. We delivered 145,000 vehicles here. The main reason was the um, production output due to corona, which was clearly beyond what we planned for. We had problems in our delivery chain. We had problems in production as such, which was something which was important at any point of time was protecting our staff and protecting our customers. With the T model, we weren't able to come up to the demand because we weren't able to get vehicles 
sales out of production, which is why we started with a very high order book in 2021. With a crafter with 61,700 vehicles, we were able to limit the decline to minus 13 percent. And with the Amarok, with 52,100 vehicles, we declined by 28.1 percent year on year. Again, there are two effects here in Europe. We have already phased out production of Amarok and the we delivered the markets from South America. And the second effect, again, was due to the pandemic. So 371,700 vehicles were delivered to customers, handed over to customers. Now, if you translate that into sales, so that's what we directly deliver to importers and uh, de dealerships. With 345,000 vehicles, we see 111,000 vehicles less than in 2019. The difference uh, between that and deliveries to customers is uh, happening because we reduced our stocks, our warehouse stocks, and thus we moved dealerships and our importers in a liquidity saving way through the pandemic. The um, number of cars, the number of vehicles, 371,700, mean a 24% decline year on year. And if we translate that into turnover, uh, we see that since 2015, we grew, we had a stable growth to almost 12 billion euros in 2017. We were able to keep that in 2018. In 2019, we saw a slight decline because of the homologation due to WLTP. And in 2020, we see a decline by 18% to 9.358 billion euros. If you want to see something positive in this chart, it's the 18 percent decline that compared to the 24 percent in deliveries to customers uh, constitute a lower number. We were able to achieve this. We were able to move our customers to going to higher value models. With 9.358 billion euros, we see still a pretty respectable turnover despite Corona. Let's take a look at the operating result. We see that in the past, we had very good three-digit millions of euros by way of results, positive results, of course. The peak stood at 853 million, and that was in 2017. Return uh, on sales of 7.2 percent. That was very respectable. In the subsequent years, when we renewed our product range, this went down slightly. And in 2020, Originally, we had already planned to come into negative numbers. You know this. We communicated it that the years 2020 and 2021 we need to get through in order to transform our brand and also in order to cater for the high CO2 steering tax payments. This was planned with a group, and we also have coverage by the group for it. In 2022, we'll come to a positive growth phase again. Our strategy 2025 plus will come in here. This is going to be explained to you by our CEO, Carsten Intra, later. Now, let's take a look at the causes, the major influence on the results for 2020. We did not plan for the high loss of volume due to COVID-19. Return on sales, we we, we lost 111,000 uh, vehicles year on year, which is 500 million euros by way of contribution to the operating result. We planned for steering tax, CO2 steering tax, 340 million euros came up in 2020, and we had higher depreciation due to the renewal of our product range, 100 million more by way of depreciation compared to 2019. And we counter steer this with our grip performance program, which started very well and which is set to sustainability. 
In this GRIP performance program, we have seven fields of action. The Board of Management is looking at this rather closely. For each field of action, there is one head of it which is looking at this particular field of action specifically. In field number one is sales performance. There we are looking at the optimization of markets and the model mix and uh, the reduction of um, tacticals very successfully implemented in 2020. Next fees, the field is cost of materials. Together with suppliers, we hold product conferences and see to it that the material costs of our products can be reduced without quality suffering. Next is factory costs and locations. We are working on a continuous improvement of production and processes. And last but not least, when it comes to structural costs, we are working on redu reducing fixed costs in order to have a positive impact on our results. These first four fields of action show directly an effect on the result, and the effect in 2020 was about 600 million euros. Otherwise, our result would have been even worse. And the other three fields of action is capital expenditure, development cost, and working capital. Those were safeguarding our liquidity. And here in 2020, we came up with an effect of about 360 million euros. Now, let's come to development costs straight away. Here you see that last year, in 2019, we already had a rather high level of almost 1 billion euros with 948 million. And in 2020, we over we went beyond the billion, saw an increase of plus 9%. This shows just how much we are expending for our future with more than 1 billion of development costs for transformation, for more electrification, for autonomous driving, I am sure that we give a clear sign as to where we want to go as Volkswagen commercial vehicles. It becomes even clearer when we take a look at capital expenditure. Here we come from 737 million in, 2020, in 2019. We grow by 31% to 966 million. That's almost 1 billion capital expenditure into our PPE. This is mainly the preparation for ID Buzz production. It's also the start for the new Caddy. It's also the start of the new T7 multi -win van, which will come in 2021. So by way of summary, we can say that 371,000 vehicles were delivered to customers, sales of about uh, 9.4 million euros is is the effect we have an operating result of minus 454 million euros at the same time we spend on development costs and capital expenditure more than two or just under two billion euros now we do this for our strategy grip 2025 plus and this strategy is now going to be explained by our ceo carsten intra over to you carsten Uh, thanks a lot, Holger. Ladies and gentlemen, our world and thus also our markets and customers are massively changing as never before. And it's precisely this speed of change that will only grow. Why? Because we see a growing need for change and also our opportunities are also changing in society and that also means that the demands placed on us by customers by markets and society are also changing in line with the necessity to protect the environment and also the technical opportunities are massively changing now for us this has two priorities we need to focus on electrification and the automation of our products we really want to be the benchmark for our customers but also for the entire industry as we're already today with our existing products we're convinced that we can make transport safer more environmentally friendly but also at the same time more efficient so right now we're truly undergoing the largest change process that this brand of commercial vehicles 
has ever gone through in its 65 years of history. Because the electrification of mobility and digitization covers all areas of our business, ranging from production and the type we collaborate with one another, all the way to the systems used in our vehicles, all the way down to our customers and business models around the vehicle and how vehicles are being used. Now, we have a number of strengths that we can positively uh, bank on. We have great, we have fascinating and award-winning products. We have a stable partnership with loyal and satisfied customers. We have excellent technologies from a unique group of companies, and we have an outstanding team that are motivated and competent. So therefore, we believe that our GRIP strategy will allow us, together with managers, the workforce, and employee representatives, to set the right course for a successful future. We're developing our strengths, and we're also securing our future with our competences. We are a European market leader in the commercial segment. We are a premium supplier for family and leisure, and we're also a leading provider for Mars and TAR systems and autonomous driving. Not just earlier, we mentioned that we expect markets to grow, and we have seen a confirmation of this trend in the past months. With our upcoming product push, we're in an excellent position, we believe, to truly defend and also grow our position in those business segments. But on top of that, we also want to be playing a leading role, thanks to autonomous driving, in the area of mass and task, mobility and transport as a service. But we also attach greater importance to people and transformation. This includes action items and programs to uh, train our workforce and prepare them for the upcoming change in society. We uh, explicitly commit ourselves to the Paris Climate Accord targets, and we're also part of the Volkswagen program entitled Go to Zero. Now, what that means is that resource-efficient operation and environmental protection is a top priority for us, and it comes with tangible targets and goals. In the past year, in 2020, we've achieved a number of important milestones, and I'll just, uh, for the sake of illustration, give you a few important highlights. Now, first of all, we have uh, finalized our agreements with our Ford partner, the cooperation with Ford, which includes an agreement on the Amarok successor, the development of uh, a city van for Ford based on the new caddy, and a shared platform together with Ford for a delivery van in the one-ton segment. Now, we're absolutely on schedule. This collaboration with Ford over the course of a product life cycle gives us significant economies of scale. We've also successfully launched the Caddy Mark V with a much-noticed world premiere in February and uh, started production in the autumn. And I'll come back to the Caddy in a moment. Our e-crafter is the first all-electric vehicle that we have developed ourselves, which is now exclusively being built in our Vrezhnya plant. Now, that for us has been a very important entry model for e-mobility, and in, as a matter of fact, it's the standard model that we use for our Moya shuttle operations, and I'll talk about Moya also in a minute. Now, something that has been important for us here in Hanover in particular was the decision to uh, build the DSUV, which is a fully electric, automated premium segment model of the Volkswagen Group that will be built here in Hanover from 2020 forward onwards. So in total, the upshot is, yes, 2020 was, despite all the adverse circumstances, a good and important year for our brand, a year of decisions. Over the past months, we have uh, taken the right decisions, have um, done our homework, and we have the right plan now. We're gaining speed now, and we are implementing our, our projects. Now, when it comes to products, we can say that the new Caddy that I've already mentioned has turned out to be an excellent vehicle. It's like a Swiss Army knife, really. It's so versatile. Uh, it can be used by craftsmen or delivery services for families, for people who carry large uh, goods and items. And now, as the camper, it's also an addition to our California family of products, a segment where we see very strong growth at the moment. We've improved our caddy in all areas, uh, a fully new body design, there's no longer a rigid axle, you drive the caddy much better now, new assist systems provide for convenience and safety, and the infotainment system is state-of-the-art of other vehicles in the VW group. 
And this makes it all the more painful that the ramp up and the launch uh, of the vehicle has coincided with a renewed lockdown. The feedback we get from retailers and our customers are very good, and uh, the caddy cannot yet fully unfold its potential because of the current conditions, but I'm very confident that the Caddy will be the new benchmark in this city delivery segment and will soon grow its market share. And in the van segment, we also extend our portfolio and uh, also bear in mind our customer requirements. Now, in June, which is literally only a couple of weeks from now, we are going to present the new Multivan, another world premiere. And the T7, mind you, is not a successor, but uh, in addition to the T6.1, which continues to be available as a commercial version, as a robust all-wheel drive model. And this is truly a paradigm shift in our camper van world, because the T7 will be the Multivan. We have continued to develop this unmistakable icon, the comfort and the dimensions of a passenger car, with the versatility and the spaciousness of a van. So both when it comes to the driving properties and the high quality interior, this uh, vehicle will be a major leap ahead. With this premium appeal, the premium feel will fascinate even more customers, I'm sure. It will be available as a plug-in hybrid from the get-go, which is an important step towards a more electrified vehicle fleet. Now, as our third camper van and as a zero emission alternative, beginning in 2022, we're going to see our ID buzz, an all-electric uh, um, commercial vehicle, also available as uh, an autonomous driving vehicle soon. And with the ID buzz, beginning in 2023, we'll be returning to the North American market, and we also see major interest there right now. So the ID buzz is really, in addition to our van portfolio, and rather than having a one-size-fits-all solution, it's an exact fit for everyone. And as I mentioned a moment ago, we're also going to soon see the new Amarok, a medium-sized pickup with a market launch plant in 2022. For this Amarok successor, we are using a platform developed together with Ford, and we are also offering in inimitable accents in terms of design and trim. And we're showing you here a design sketch already, which uh, I think makes one thing very clear. This is going to be a great pickup truck, a genuine Volkswagen with a clear design signature of Volkswagen. And the first reactions we received are just uh, outstanding. It's really going down well. And I personally like it a lot as well. So at the end of the day, this is exactly what our customers would want, because the Amarok already has a very loyal fan community. In total, what I think we can rightly say is that uh, we are going to cater to customers and markets with outstanding products, and we're going to grow our market share. But as I said before, we are transitioning into a new world of autonomous driving. So from our traditional business, we get into the new world of the ID Buzz AD. Volkswagen Commercial Vehicles actively drives the development and the implementation of autonomous driving. We've received approval by the Volkswagen Supervisory Board for our billion investments in this development. We're now setting the strategic course for the future because autonomous and electric driving will be an important contribution towards mobility and uh, safety of driving in the cities. And uh, our vehicles are a logical use case for such systems. The all-electric ID bus by Volkswagen commercial vehicles will be the first, first vehicle in the Volkswagen group that will be fully autonomous. First test driving is already scheduled for this year, and we assume at the moment that from 2025 onwards, autonomous vehicles by Volkswagen commercial vehicles will be on the roads. Now, for that, we've taken a stake in Argo AI, which is a world leader in autonomous driving systems. This allows us to get access to the technology of these self-driving systems, which makes autonomous driving in our vehicles possible, because this technology is really a key for highly profitable new mobility solutions. Now today already we are growing into this role as, as a mobility provider with Moya in Hamburg and Hanover. Moya is a service that allows our customers to uh, get a ride-sharing offer through a mobile app in inner city driving. So Moya already is a mass platform to test autonomous driving in commercial service. 
We also have new solutions uh, in the segment of transportation or transportation solutions. Beginning on the 1st of March, CETO GmbH has been set up as a task spin-off of Volkswagen Commercial Vehicles. It's a digital clearing platform for courier services that will be going live this summer. We have used uh, group-wide synergies. The CETO team is being also consulted by Porsche Consulting. The seed capital for CETO comes from our Innovation Fund 2. CETO is a genuine startup. It's quick, it's agile, it's genuine entrepreneurial spirit, if you will. CETO will then match customers and couriers in, in a given geographical area. And this digital solution obviously has a number of advantages in terms of order handling and price transparency. Now, something like that we have not seen in this fragmented market segment. Courier can benefit as well. They get direct access to customers, better service, and better earnings. So CETO in the long term can increase efficiency in the market by uh, avoiding expensive and environmental detrimental empty runs. So this is exactly what we mean when we talk access to market, F customized concepts for the success of our customers. And this goes in line with our pilot project that we're currently organizing with our customer Hermes and uh, Neo Heldon, a startup in the UK. Now this uses speech-based solutions where the courier or the driver of a delivery van gets information on the upcoming delivery process, where to take a delivery, what address, how to drop it off, and if no drop off facilities available, where to go. Uh, alternatively, this makes the uh, work of a delivery driver much easier yeah, saves time, especially for large delivery volumes, especially in this growing market. And I'm sure in the next couple of months we will see more of such solutions by Volkswagen commercial vehicles in the next months. So stay tuned. Now, ladies and gentlemen, our transformation program has also had an impact on our factories. We're investing in the future of our manufacturing facilities. We uh, continue to invest and modernize. Just last year, we have comprehensively modernized our plant in Posen and Poland. Over two years, we have conducted this work while production was ongoing. And since October 2020, we have been building the new caddy there based on the MQB platform. And as I said before, our Polish plants will also be producing the city van for Ford. When it comes to Hanover, we are also on schedule. In our anniversary year, exactly 65 years ago, the first camper vans left our factory. And now we're converting Stucken, our Stucken plant in Hanover, to become a highly modern multi-traction factory. At the moment, we are um, full focus on uh, the launch of the new multi-van in the second half of the year. And then in the coming year, we're going to get started with the ID Buzz. The ID Buzz is the first vehicle from Hanover that is using the modular electric uh, matrix of the Volkswagen Group, and from then onwards, uh, we're going to uh, build uh, vehicles on three different vehicle platforms in parts of the factory, uh, like an assembly of uh, two lines. Now, two lines means we keep a high degree of flexibility in production, and then in about three years from now, we are going to uh, make this plant at Hanover a production facility for the D-class SUV. So as I said before, highly automated, fully electric, premium vehicles that we are going to build for other Volkswagen Group brands. So that decision is an important milestone for our high technology plant here at Hanover, and it's a show of confidence uh, for the performance of our team. Now, despite everything we do in um, production here, we always keep a track on environmental protection. Our vision is to establish sustainable production with as little environmental impact as possible. Now, this goal has been part of the Zero Impact Factory strategy. It's also contributing towards the wider environmental mission of the group. Our strategy at Volkswagen Commercial Vehicles comes with very specific targets. Our environmental impact will be reduced by 50% by 2025 compared to 2020, uh, 2010. So what that means, 50% less water consumption, solvents and energy consumption, 50% less waste and CO2 emissions. Now we are on good track. In Hanover alone, we've already achieved this target by 39%. I think this is excellent uh, and it testifies to the performance of our great team. This is a challenge and we are aware of this responsibility so we're also supporting our staff with education and training. For instance, uh, we 
re-educate or retrain them to become production programmers. That allows us to use exec existing experti expertise and IT competence of our workforce. So our first colleagues also have received their certificates by the Chamber of Industry and Commerce. It's a major success that I really like. So congratulations to all of our colleagues. So you see, Volkswagen Commercial Vehicles is changing. Our vehicles for commercial customers and families will stay the central pillars of our business. However, they will more and more so be, be increased by a third pillar, autonomous cars and new mobility and transport solutions. This third pillar will, in the mid-run, be a major part of our sales and results. In the first step, however, we have major initial capital expenditure. To stem. Therefore, we expand the unit Volkswagen Commercial Vehicles by a new line, a new division, which will focus on all the businesses around MAS, TAS, and autonomous driving. It's Moya, it's the investment in Agro, AI, Saito, Saito, and further activities for development of autonomous driving. Both units, with the name Car Business and MAS, TAS, AD, will form the company Volkswagen Commercial Vehicles. The division MAS, TAS, and AED will be built up as a strong operative unit. Classic functions like HR, finance, procurement, and communication will be managed centrally by Volkswagen Commercial Vehicles, so we won't have duplications of functions. The expansion to have a new division, MAS, TAS, and AD, shows the particular significance of these fields for the future. It's the logical continuation and fleshing out of our Volkswagen Commercial Vehicles corporate strategy. Ladies and gentlemen, this brings me to the end of my presentation with the measures that I described uh, within our strategy. We go the way of um, courageous and consistent investment into a strong future and a successful future for Volkswagen commercial vehicles beyond this decade. What is important to me is this plan is a plan for growth. In the mid-run with deliveries, sales and result will grow, grow clearly and be profitable. On this way, we deliberately um, accept two years of a negative result. This happens with the full coverage of the group, and it happens with the conviction that we have to invest now in order to use our opportunities in the market and in order to play a future uh, role, a future uh, role um, it, we, in order to jump far, we have to start running up now. Volkswagen Commercial Vehicles is a brand that is radiating. Our cars are loved by human pe by people for years and for decades. The basis is the enthusiasm of our customers for products. That's the basis for our business. It gives us the power for the big transformation which we are in already. Now, the new products need to be brought to the market with a high degree of quality and excellence and with subjects for the future like autonomous driving and new mobility issues, we need to be role models and make our customers enthusiastic with those as well. Then, with Volkswagen Commercial Vehicles, we have the big unique chance to be decisive when it comes to the mobility of the next decade. Thank you very much for your attention.